Welcome to the uh, workshop between the town council and the school board, and also president, <coughs> town manager, and the superintendent. Um, thank you all for being here. There may be a few members, uh, maybe one more counselor and a couple more of the school board members that uh, may meander in, and that's okay. Um, I didn't make an agenda. Usually, Tom does it for me, so it must be his fault. <laughs> <laughs> but generally, tonight is just a, just a, a group discussion of where the budget currently sits so that we can um, look at any other potentials for adjustments in the budget. And also, I, I, I just found it important to, again, continue the word I hate, the transparency of the council and the school board. The more times that we you know, meet together, the, I think the better the information that gets out to the general public who are very, very concerned about the potential of a large tax increase. I received um, at least five, if not six, emails today uh, with folks very, very concerned about the, the rate. Um, they're looking at the net appropriation rate, they're looking at the 9.29 percent, and um, not happy. So, um, Anything that we can do that uh, helps the budget anymore, uh, perhaps tonight there'll be a light bulb that comes on. I don't know. But I do know that the school department, uh, I'll, I'll probably start with uh, Kate, uh, has a presentation from the school department relative to the current status of the, the budget based on deliberations of the finance committee and their vote <coughs> on Monday night uh, for the adjustments that they made into the bu in the budget. <coughs> Okay, Chris, I'm sorry. She just pushed and buttons. Yes, that's right. Every Pat Sajak needs a van mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. Um, so uh, the first slide here, basically, it looks at the, um, the, the different philosophies which we talked a little bit about, we touched a little bit on in the, in the uh, Finance Committee joint meeting. Um, for, um, for us, it, it is a, a um, slightly different approach. Um, for us, it began about 18 months ago with the uh, community dialogue, and that forum used that to establish shared goals, community goals for education, and also to look at the expectations of the Scarborough School Department. So that's an opportunity for the community to get together and give us some input and some ideas of what they want the school system to look like. Um, we just had another very successful one last season, uh, so that process is ongoing. Um, but this, this first budget was based on findings from 18 months ago. Um, I, I think it's really important to note that the, the first reading of the budget was, was the student needs based budget and it was based on the, the, the school board asking Dr. Entwistle to craft a budget that meets the needs of each of our students regardless of their capabilities and it was full compliance with federal and state mandates. So we, we, we really weren't putting the emphasis on the three requirements from the council up front, our obligation is to make sure that the, the education is, is funded properly, that the state mandate that we're required to, to handle. Um, that's one of the reasons why the, the, the town council is a separate governing body from the school board. We've got certain obligations we have to, we have to meet as well. So um, basically that first, that, that's why that first budget was, was, um, was so drastic or so different, if you will. So can we go to the next one? So I wanted to give you a little bit of insight into where we were coming from, where our thoughts are. So uh, if you look at the five-year uh, average expenditure increase from the town of Calvary, and these are actual numbers, this isn't, uh, this isn't a conjecture or opinion, these are the real numbers. Um, we basically, since five, 2009, there's been a cumulative increase of $4,485,000. Um, that averages out to about a 12.6% increase over the five years which leaves us really with an average of about 2.6% a year. The really important thing to take away from this slide, though, isn't necessarily the numbers. They, they are important, but it's the, it's the pattern of the numbers. They're high, they're low. They're high, they're low. And we can correlate that, that non-linear funding with student performance. 
So when we have years that are short, we can go back retroactively, look at some testing data, and look at some areas and see that it does impact the programs. So our, one of our <coughs> goals is to try and maintain that consistent rebuilding that we talked about and maintaining that infrastructure. And that does tie in with the, the council's requirements of maintaining the infrastructure and, and not scaling back. So we also looked at um, the Scarborough versus the state. Um, this is the state average um, per student Per, per student spending per year, um, Scarborough is consistently low there. Um, that's that's uh, even with a, a, an increasing trend, you'll see we're starting to close that gap. Um, and our goal ultimately as a, as a board, I think, as a minimum is to get to the minimum state funding level. I think that's critical. I heard from several people last night at our, at our community dialogue that were transplants from outside of Maine and outside of outside of the greater Portland community, they are looking at this stuff when they come to move here. They were very clear of it, it came down to uh, us and, and a few other schools. And if you click the cohort, um, the cohort group is really the places that we're competing with for drawing in new families and drawing in new people. And I, I know the cohort is, um, there's a lot of, I don't want to say anxiety around it, but there's a lot of questioning about it. Um, the, the cohort really is, is a very good way for us to, to measure against um, some common factors. It may not be, as we said in the Finance Committee, it may not be exactly Macintosh apples to Macintosh apples, but at least it's Macintosh to Golden and Delicious. And it gives us a pretty good basis of where we stand in terms of the surrounding community. The state also uses data like this to determine EPS funding and determine how schools are positioned for various programs. The other thing that's coming down to, which we found out today, was there's, there's possibly school grading coming down the line. I don't know if this is going to factor into that or not, but there is a chance that we may not like what comes out of that. I don't know. So my, my point is, is that we, we, we don't have to like this. We, we don't have to agree with it, but that's a mechanism that the state's using and that a lot of people <coughs> are using as a reference point to show are we, how we can compare and how we are progressing. So using those two different scenarios, we ran some simulations, if you will. We looked at scenario one, was, which is what would happen if we, if we funded it just the state average? And this, this data is older data. It's from 2011, 2012, which if you notice in our funding year, that was a very low year. But if we funded just at that state minimum level, the difference in funding would have been $2.7 million in addition to, to what, we, what we had funded as a town. And that doesn't even compare to the second scenario, which is if that same snapshot at that same time, if we funded just at the average level to those 13 surrounding communities, 12 surrounding communities, we would be number seven out of 13. And that would result, <coughs> even if you don't agree with that, the fact of the matter is, is a $7 million increase is what would have been required just to get to that level. So as a board looking at this data and looking at these numbers, it's Quite frankly, it's rather shocking. So, you know, it's, it's, it's very important to understand that we're not starting from a, a blank slate or from uh, a place that's not realistic. We're looking at historical data, we're looking at comparisons, and we're looking at what we think it needs, where we need to be, basically. Okay. So where are we now? Uh, on Tuesday, the, um, the, the school board adopted our, our budget, our second reading. Um, the one on the left is the student needs based budget, and the one on the right is the budget that we that was uh, passed and that we're presenting to the to the council for approval, or at least for a vote. Um, basically, we we you know it, it, as Judy mentioned and as we mentioned in the finance committees, it was it's a lot of work. It was a lot of heavy lifting. Um, there are a lot of things that came into that that process, but the bottom line is, I don't know if anybody's going to be happy with this budget. Well, I've heard from people that are going to be upset that it's too low. I've heard people that are obviously are going to be upset that it's too high. Um, we've got an obligation to find that compromise and find that middle ground somewhere. And I, I, I think um, we've, we've done a pretty decent job of trying to get there. Um, the goal for us is to you know, maintain our programs, not expand them, 
not, not um, you know, go after you know, capital equipment improvements and things like that outside beyond where we need to be tracking just to try and get to that minimum level of state. Um, So in the budget, we're looking at, a, at an increase over last year of two point, a little over $2.2 million. And the reason I put the slide in here is, is I, I wanted it to, to be clear, not so much that the wages are high and that the state shift in retirement is there. Those are all factors. But of that $2.2 million, there is a very small percentage that's actually going to programming. So this isn't $2.2 million in there hiring new teachers to expand language arts programs, it's, it's not there. That This is our basic operating increases, and those, that's the breakup. That's where the most of them are coming from. So it's, when you see that number, it doesn't mean that we're going to put $2.2 million back into programs. It's just, it's just not there. So finally, this is, this is where it comes out. To the, this is how it shakes out with the town. Um, basically, we're, we're with the bu if you accept the budget that we put in front of you, um, and we hope you will, um, and I believe these numbers line up with, with Tom's, we're looking at a, um, a, a change in the school budget of 5.61%. Um, that puts us below the county percentage increase, for sure. Um, it also brings our total percent change in expenditures down to 3.97%. So I know it doesn't hit our, the three that you were looking for, um, but, but quite frankly, to get to that number um, from our side would have resulted in dismantling programs. And that's really something we, we need to avoid. We really need to avoid that. And, and I'm hoping we can compromise at this point and, and, and accept this because it really is, um, it is a standing still budget. It's not, it's not two steps forward and one step back. It's, it's standing in place. Just, so, just some corrections in those numbers that are up there. The town, uh, the percentage um, is 1.49%. Okay. Uh, and um, the county is 5.72, and then the adult, uh, adult ed is the 8.03. So it, it's uh, the bottom number should be 3.95. Is that correct, Tom? I believe so. Yeah. yeah. I think we can have a chance to incorporate now. Yeah. So I, I'm hoping that gives you guys a little bit of basis. I mean, we know. Okay. We, I think we all understand it's not an easy process, and and we do have, we do kind of approach it from different sides sometimes, uh, uh, the, the municipal versus the the, the school side. But we, you know, I, I can assure you this was this is not an arbitrary number. It's, it's a lot of work. It's been a lot of work. And uh, I do thank Judy and the, and the finance committee for, for allowing us to have a dialogue up front. I think that was helpful. It certainly uh, we used some of the suggestions. Um, it brought us to, uh, um, um, uh, you know, a, I think a more clear, transparent understanding of where we're coming. And, and for the public benefit, now get this right, the 3.95% is the operating expenses percentage. But when we look at, because I, I did get some communications from residents today, and they are looking at the 9.2%, and that is the net budget. That's correct? actually the increase in tax levy, so, yeah. uh, and, and therefore the proposed increase, potential increase in the uh, tax rate to meet that higher levy. <coughs> And if we look at numbers, uh, the town gross, based on that 1.49 percent, is the increase is um, four uh, four thousand fourteen dollars and eight hundred and twelve four hundred fourteen thousand eight hundred and twelve dollars. And the the school number is a little bit different from Tom, Tom's is a little bit different, but approximately 2.2. And then the um, the adult ed is is an increase of eleven thousand two two hundred and thirty six dollars in the county. Um, their gross went uh, theirs went from two thousand seventy two million seventy five thousand to two million one hundred and ninety thousand, and that's a difference of um, one hundred and eighteen thousand six hundred and thirty dollars. So overall, we're looking at um, with um, operating expenses two million seven hundred and fourteen thousand sixty seven dollars. 
in order to get to a 3% on the tax rate per no, thousand. No, no, that's just on expenditures. On, the, on expenditures. Uh, we would have to look for another $650,000 from the budget. Uh, there, uh, Judy's looking at a piece of paper that I have here and not all of you have, and I'm pleased to provide that to you. Um, I can do that now or we can uh, yeah. take the questions with the schools. Yep. I'll pass them around. <coughs> By all means. Would you like me just to yes, introduce please. the in front? Yep. I'll let everyone get a copy first. So as the first page suggests, um, this is a listing, uh, detailed accounting, if you will, of the work of the Finance Committee through five sessions, uh, most recent of which just Tuesday this, uh, this week. And so this shows the, uh, the changes up and down, both the expenditure and, and, uh, and revenues. Um, and so you'll see the middle column, bottom line, the total change to the total budget is $1,705,061. And we're certainly pleased to talk about these particulars. Um, that's uh, the work of the Finance Committee to date. Page two are the numbers that uh, have been talked about, and Judy just went through in further detail. Uh, this shows that, uh, and includes those Finance Committee proposed changes uh, and, and does result in the current status of 3.95% increase in expenditures. Um, I think it's fairly self-explanatory. Just for comparison, we started out we're at 10.91%, so we certainly have made uh, progress toward the goal, not, not there yet. And then I have a table in the back, looks like this, that um, might be helpful. Um, I know it's helpful to staff just to get a sense of the order of magnitude. Uh, the green shaded box in the upper left-hand corner shows you where we are currently. And this is calculated based on the average value of home of $300,000. And the, the intent of this is to calculate what the impact on the average taxpayer is. So um, where we sit currently, we're looking at a 9.2% increase in the tax rate. And you'll see the uh, ensuing or the resulting effect on taxes. In this chart, you can follow it along and see as you reduce that impact on tax rate what it means to the taxpayer. Perhaps most importantly to this meeting is look at the smaller box at the right. Uh, that correlates directly to those numbers and you can see how much would need to be removed from the budget and expenditure or added in revenue, which is unlikely, or a combination of the two, uh, to meet those different benchmarks. And so, um, again, it's fairly self-explanatory and it ends where we currently are at a tax rate of 1380. Uh, so just for everyone to appreciate uh, from where we are right now, to get to a flat tax rate, we're looking at removing over $4.6 million. And then there, uh, the, the, uh, the last pages are revised computation pages. That um, The first one is a, is a blended one that shows the full tax levy and then there's a breakdown for school, town school, and county. And just a, a final comment, uh, I guess back to the first page. Uh, Staff will prepare a motion for the council to consider next Wednesday at your, at your budget meeting or your regular meeting where the budget will be taken up. All changes to the budget must be um, introduced as amendments. And so the practice has been for the Finance Committee to offer um, their recommendations in a motion. Uh, very often, councilors will want to extract elements out and vote on them separately. Uh, but that's what I've talked to the to Council Roy about and we'll prepare that motion for consideration. It'll come out um, on Friday with your packet. Okay. I'm pleased to go back through and provide any further detail on what I just gave a high level overview on. Judy. Sure. I, I just have a question. What happens in your budget? You, you figured in there what would happen if you know, the governor's proposal of the retirement shifting and things like that. You figured that all in, the one point, whatever it was, three. Yeah, uh, yeah, you figured that all in. So that's part of the budget. So what happens if things change in Augusta and that money's reinstated? Where does that 
reflect any place, or where does that go? Well, we, we, we did talk to the, to the finance committee a little bit about that. Um, the way it's it's sent to us, um, and Kate, Kate still there, she's going to hit me in the back of the head if I'm wrong here, but I believe what happens is it's part of our general purpose aid, so it goes in as a um, an added amount there with the understanding that we will write the checks against it on our expenditure side. So if the state decides to fund that, we won't have those expenditures, but they'll also pull that money out of our general purpose state account as well. And, in, and the, the, the concern that we would have is that the formula doesn't go both ways well, so we may actually lose more if they plug us into the regular accounting formula to pull that money back out again. So in a simple way, if... if it's a wash. Yeah. It's a wash. Yeah. Or we could lose more. Right. It's really how it yeah. goes. But it is a wash if, yeah. if, if, if wash they go if through they and you're reimbursed and they, they put your art someplace else. So the money was run through the EPS formula and we ended up getting credit for um, getting credit for the fact that we were going to end up with that extra expenditure. If in fact the expenditure goes away, the calculation will be rerun again and instead of $1.2 million in reduced subsidy, subsidy, it's likely to be, if, we, if it were a wash, it would be $1.7 million. So whether it's $500,000 in additional expense and $1.2 million in um, less uh, revenue, or this goes away, but they, re they adjust the subsidy, it's one point seven here, and as, as uh, Chris has said, our understanding is this EPS formula, which uh, there's one man in the state who can explain it to you, Jim Ryer. Um, <coughs> but as this thing, as, if this thing is to be reversed again, the thing that we would be afraid of is that we would be that we would lose more money, and it would be in the form of the revenue. Mm -hmm. So, simple answer is. Doesn't do anything because the bottom, the bottom line of our subsidy gets recalculated, and likely at best would leave us in the same hole of 1.7 something million dollars. Good, thank you for that explanation. The other just critical piece of that, it does occur to me, of the 2.2 million dollars or so in increased expenditures, 525,000 or so. 533. 533. Uh, is retirement, and so I think it's important to note <coughs> that should that expense go away, their percentage increase will go down commensurately. Mm -hmm. Right. So it is reflected in the, because it's, it's a new cost from last year. And on the on the municipal side, either Judy or Tom, sure. where, where there was a proposal to uh, reduce some funds, where, where, how would that work out? Uh, but based on my analysis of the governor's proposed budget um, that is still in flux, um, there's, there's no less than five areas that could affect us. I've talked to a lot of folks and I've actually included a reduction in revenue uh, resulting from the proposed change to the commercial excise tax. Uh, that's for the state to uh, keep all those funds, whereas since 1929, they've been kept locally. Um, that amounts to a $170,000 decrease in our budget, so that would certainly be good news if that's restored. Um, I've not included any other potential uh, revenue impacts. Again, that's a, a bit of a calculated risk in terms of uh, understanding the politics of those proposals and where they're likely to end up. Um, we're not likely to know until mid to late June. Um, you know, the state is under the same requirement to pass their budget by June 30. I suspect they'll be down to the final hours this year. Um, and as I understand the process, this week all the committees will report um, to the Appropriations Committee, and then the Appropriations Committee is the one that actually works through the budget, and ultimately the full legislature uh, will look, must vote on the budget. Um, all indications are that they'll, the governor will likely veto things if they're substantially different from his proposal, and so it remains to be seen how it all shakes out. Um, but I, we're certainly going to have uh, decisions made locally before we know what the effect is from the state. Good. Thank you. Yeah, and I think um, Amy Vogue uh, sends a, a newsletter out. I don't know how many people read that, but I mean, there's a lot of movement in the Finance Committee on a state level, and it just depends on what happens when it goes to, goes to the uh, legislature for a vote and, and certainly to the to the governor. But 
um, they're talking about looking at um, reinstating some taxes or increasing some taxes in lodging and cigarettes and um, uh, looking at the state sales tax and moving it back up to the 6% that was in, in vogue uh, when Jock McKernan was governor. And then we reduced it back to 5.5 and we reduced it to 5. Also um, looking at adjusting the amount of money, um, state, ta state tax that somebody that earns over $100,000 would pay. They bumped, they had bumped that down from 8.5 to 7.5, reinstating that. So they're looking at about $198 million shortfall, and with some of those tax adjustments, they, they can, they can uh, perhaps do that. So it's kind of, it was a little glean of hope, at least, uh, for me, when I, when I read that, that they're, you know, the Finance Committee is uh, moving. They um, also kicked out of that um, the circuit breaker changes, um, which is important to a, a lot of our residents here in Scarborough, and we're going to be reducing the amount of money that folks could get for the circuit breaker, which is to help those folks who don't have children in the school and, and need some help with their taxes. Uh, that was one of the efforts to, to help rather than taxing them differently. And then um, also the homestead exemption um, proposal that was out there to uh, stop the age uh, at 65 so that people between 60 and 65 would lose that homestead eject exemption, which is it takes $10,000 off your ta uh, you know, the value of your home um, before taxes are levied on it. Uh, so that it, it w might reinstate that, but they, they, they kicked those two things out as far as they they, they, were, they were voted down. So I, I but, think the real key. I don't mean to ran the phrase. Yeah, I know. These proposals, whether the new tax proposals or the budget, needs to be veto proof. Yeah. Uh, and so two thirds is a yeah. very very high bar for you know, the whole market basket of things. So it, mm -hmm. it's. But but I think you know there's certainly outcry statewide in all communities. I think all <coughs> communities are being affected, and then certainly in, in in southern Maine, we're being affected much more than um, communities in northern Maine um, uh, because we're supposedly rich, and uh, at least it, it appears that way to the to the state. So, but I, I like to keep my glass half full. So I'm going to be real positive I'm about it. It's going to be empty. We'll be future somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> it, will, it will come out somewhere, somewhere in the middle, I think. Hopefully. Um, other questions or thoughts uh, on the budget? I'd just like to ask the school board a question. There was an article in the paper this morning about Portland school board reducing their budget. Did you people read that? <coughs> they eliminated 55 positions. Right, and, and one of the ways that um, Portland has been um, assisting in that reduction over the past several years is to add um, to anyone interested in retiring another $20,000 last year if you want to retire. And that's not an area that Scarborough has, to my knowledge gone into. So in other words, I mean, you're looking at 10 elementary schools, three middle schools, two high schools. It's a very different town than I think it is important to know. Ever. I mean, the cohorts that we're looking at aren't random. They're, they're equivalent, um, relatively equivalent in terms of uh, student population size, relatively equivalent in terms of um, you know, property values and things like that. So they're a pretty pretty good comparison, and Portland is often an outlier because it is very unique in, in and of itself. Um, it's a much different system than we run before. And I think any time, it, 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 as well as on the municipal side, it's very difficult to say, let's compare us with these. It is that apples and oranges. Uh, sometimes they're still the same, uh, they're apples, but they're different brands. Uh, and so what public works might provide for the town of Scarborough is far different than when what public works in Old Lodge provides. And uh, so it, it's really difficult to weed all of those, those uh, variables out of, the, out of the equation and come up with, uh, come up with uh, equality. Uh, it's, so. it's, a little, it's a little more straightforward on the school side of things. Um, there are some criteria that the state looks at across the board from all districts. Um, and that is as probably as close as, to, as a head-to-head -head comparison we can have, um, and we look at that data as well. So it's, it's, you're right. I mean, it's not it's not an arbitrary mixing. You know, you have to get as close to uh, something like we have as we can. 
my point, I think my point is more that they took a look at the effect of the budget on the taxpayers. And I don't necessarily see that with your budget. Even though your very first goal is to be economically friendly, or got that term in it, I can't remember the slide, but. Fiscally responsible? I'm not sure what it's Credible? Maybe. I think the, you know, the first budget, um, the, um, I, I've heard uh, comments about the first budget, and Chris, I think, explained it. Um, myself and my team were asked to put together the budget that we should have to meet the needs of the students here. Um, if we were to have that, uh, you would be looking at the numbers that are over in the, in the first column, essentially. Um, Kate has prepared some materials here. Um,
And you can look in any one of those places. And the good news is that Scarborough spends less than the state average on transportation. That's because we do a darn good job. We spend less than the state average in terms of maintenance and facilities. It's because we do a really, really good job. Unfortunately, we spend less than the rest of the state or on a state average does in terms of student programming. That's not a really good job. That's, the, that's where the gap is. We spend less than the state spends in terms of administration. So you, the people who are running, this is not a heavy, you know, a heavy uh, handed, top heavy kind of organization. In fact, we're less than the state average. So, so and those are all very comparable. You can pick any district you want. You can look at state averages. Now, when we look at a more appropriate contrast of a cohort group of 12 other districts that are like us demographically, that we want to compete with in terms of attracting homeowners and businesses, we find ourselves in that pool of 13, not only in 13th place in terms of our spending per pupil, but way below. We're, we're in a low 13%. And that's what, that's what those numbers are saying. Right? In one of those years, basically, to just reach the average, and we're not even asking to be in the average of those 13 districts. But if we were to be in the average, it would have meant a difference of $7 million in that one year for the school. So you, you get to see a contrast in terms of the level of spending that's happening in places like <coughs> Wells Agonquit, um, uh, York, Durham, um, yes, Cape, Falmouth, uh, Cumberland, um, you know, the, those kinds of districts. These, they're appropriate districts that we compete with every which way. Our kids are going to compete with those kids to get into college. They're going to compete with those kids to get jobs. So I, I think that the starting with the student needs-based budget is not a tactic to try to, try to create a large number so that a, another lower large number looks better. It is, it's a, it's, there's, there's a method to the madness. It makes, it, it makes sense. It's looking at what we would be like if we were providing the same types of programs that those other 12 systems would provide. So um, I think this sheet is, is sort of is, is a nice one because it basically shows you the changes that have happened. There's um, always a little confusion at the bottom third of the sheet because um, Tom carries a number, it's just the way that we look at the numbers a little bit differently. He carries one that that uh, includes the uh, school nutrition budget, and it's always a little bit lower. So that's why you see the 5.61%, where we continue to reflect the operating budget without school nutrition, because the school nutrition is basically a, um, it's, it's a wash. It's, there's, there's no net cost there, generally. Um, so we started there. These are the adjustments, and I, and I would just direct your attention to the very bottom piece here, which is re reduce new proposals to the most essential items. The new proposals started, again, in the student needs-based budget in excess of a million dollars, and they were not, again, pie in the sky. They were things that this, this school district needs. We reduced that in the first blush to about half that, and now we have um, reduced it um, uh, to a very minimal amount. In fact, the amount being invested in new proposals, and anybody from business would see this as being absurd, it's essentially what we're reinvesting to, to grow our business and to make it stronger is less than one half of one percent of this budget. So, so there's, there's, there's nothing in, you know, there's nothing that shouts out, this is outrageous, this is crazy, this is overspending. It's, it's not at all. It is, it's basically trying to, quite frankly, catch up and be a, a little bit more competitive with the pack that we should be running with. The, the comment of catching up, uh, a lot of people are going to grab onto that comment and say, 
uh, this is going to be continuation year after year after year. And they're already saying that the school budget every single year seems to be higher and higher. Uh, and now the honest truth of the whole matter is that we're taxing our residents right out of town. People just cannot afford to keep on paying increases. We've had a 13.6% increase in our tax rate over the past three years. This, if, if this budget passed, we see up to 24% increase in our tax rate in a four-year period of time. I think it's, the CPI has only gone up 7%. I mean, we're nowhere near in balance. Not, and, and I'm not and I'm not blaming uh, you, George, or what the school board, or it's <laughs> it's a whole myriad of things. But somehow we've got to get our arms around it. But, but see, Ed, um, one of the things that needs to be understood is catching up by increasing one half of one percent of the budget. That's what I'm talking about. Catch the, are the, the the new investments at one half of one percent. Is what we're is, is the way that we're catching up. So I don't I don't know why anyone would take issue with that. And if you look at moving out of town and you look at moving to any other town around here, yeah. including the including the other 12 that we're comparing ourselves with, which are, are all contiguous districts in this whole entire area, you're not going to find a lower tax rate, and you're not going to find a a, 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 a a town that spends any less per pupil. On, uh, on its students. This is the lowest. And as I said, we're not only the lowest, we're way below. Way, way below. So and, and I think true, too, to that, although the municipal budget didn't, we, we don't have a major, major increase, but the, the longer you put things on the back burner, the more costly it's going to be one year, two years, three years down the road to meet the needs. And people don't only move to Scarborough because of our education system. They look at the entire community. How close am I to all the amenities that I like? What are the services that the town offers? Uh, you know, people traverse through here and they, they always say, I always know when I get to Scarborough because the roads are, you know, cleared better or, uh, you know, those kinds of things. And, but, you know, the municipal department has done the same thing, is put things, hold things, and not, not come forward with them. And um, it, it's going to catch up with us. We have, to, we have to meet the needs of the residents. And uh, so, you know, the residents, I guess, need to say, what am I willing to do without? Um, because, you know, the minute the snow leaves, people want to know when they're going to be down to clean the beach. And a neighbor of mine came to me the other day and said, when are we going to have the major uh, junk pickup? And we haven't done that for several years because of the cost. So, you know, those are the kinds of things that citizens, I'd like to hear from citizens, what is it what you'd like to do without? Because we can't get those things done and have people work for minimum wage. That is not going to work for minimum wage. So it's a conundrum. It's a catch-22, and I think you have to determine number one, uh, what you want for services, and number two, look at your other communities, and I think it's an excellent point. We, we were second lowest last year in the rate of... Um, Cumberland County? Yeah, in yes, Cumberland so. County, and uh, based on what we're seeing with all the other communities out there with working with their budgets and the articles in the paper, we're still going to be probably the second lowest in the great, whole greater Portland area as far as rate per thousand mil. So. Yeah, but our houses are worth more, so. Well, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's the value, the 22. Yeah. The value is more, and, you know, that's, uh, it's not a, it's not a, um, it's not a totally a uh, town-driven process. It's a state-driven process based on, you know, beaches. We went through, uh, back in the 90s, a, a, a reval of the beach areas, and there was, you know, a lot of adjustments then, too, so. Yeah, but our town is valued at almost twice as much as almost any other town around here. <coughs> that's that's the reason why the mill rate's so low. But I think, you know, the one thing we have to work hard on, and that's why we have Sedco, and I think it's that, that commercial base, and we have to, we have to grab, grab a hold of more commercial base in order to buffer some of this property taxes. 
and the long and the short of it, I, you know, I welcome any opportunity for, you know, somebody to give me a real clear-cut um, reduction, further reductions that they'd like to make in either side of the budget that makes sense. I, 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 I look to, you know, other councilors to give them some suggestions, <laughs> too, or certainly for residents to send emails. And, you know, I, 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 would, I would like to point something out. I mean, we're all, everybody on the board is a town person as well, and we're all subject to the same taxes that everybody else is. And, and I, you know, I mean, I, I, I've heard many people say that we're disconnected and we're not in touch with reality and what's going on. I think it's really, um, it's really, really important to, to understand that we're not like of the other town departments. I think sometimes it, it gets that flushing or that melding, if you will, of the whole budget into one big mass um, is a little misleading. I mean, we have 30, 300, 3,300 students showing up every day regardless. We can't furlough a class for a day. We can't, we can't, you know, do alternate Thursdays where we have, you know, no power or something. We, we really are restricted with how we can accommodate these kids. And we have a lot of unfunded mandates that we all know about. We have a lot of responsibility that we have to take on whether we like it or not. So I, I think the point is, is um, you know, I, I'd be happy, I, I would consider it you know, ultimately a success if we could get to the state average. And, and I think that's a very low bar to set. And, and I, I think that's an expectation as a town that we really should be striving for. Will we get there today? Certainly not. Um, we will always be playing catch up until we get to that point. But until we can get to that base level, I, I, that's, that's, that's where we are. I mean, we can talk about philosophies, but the facts and the statistics show where we are. And there's that, that gap will continue to grow if we continue to flat fund. We, and I think uh, it takes all of us working too, not on a local level, but at a, at a state level and a national level as well. I mean, encouraging representatives that are running for office to, uh, ourselves to get up there and uh, say, this is how it is. Don't forget where you came from. Mm -hmm. I, don't, I, I just don't think that we're going to be able to tax our citizens out of this mess that we're in. We've got to look at other alternatives, and as a council, we're doing that. We've, one of our goals this year we set was the pro-business community, and we're sp putting a lot of time and energy into trying to attract more businesses into this town. That's what we have to do on this end. But, you know, I look at this whole budget thing, and I know the school is different. I, agree, I grant you that. I give you that um, with what you have to deal with. Um, the fact of the matter is, on this side, though, we've, we're looking at everything in and, and fire department. They need four more firefighters, uh, firefighters, paramedics now, you know. We've got to figure out how we get that into the equation, you know. Uh, public works, whether they need a piece of equipment. And I know you're much larger, but the fact of the matter is, all those decisions that we make on all of those other departments, uh, they certainly uh, have an impact on the overall the tax budget, the people have to do. I, I think people are struggling in this t day and age, you know, and uh, I've heard more this year from people who said, you got to cut us a break, you know, on this. Um, I don't think this recession turned around the way we thought it would, and we hope it would, you know, uh, and, and things haven't got gotten better faster or as fast as we would like to see, but um, I know it's uh, pretty disheartening. I'm, I'm sure if sitting on that side when you want to move forward, and you want to fix something that's broken, but um, I guess we're going to all have to be patient. We're going to have to work even harder, our pro-business uh, attitude, and, and uh, we're going to have a workshop on that next week, you know, uh, to make sure that that's moving forward. But I guess there's a number of things that we're going to all have to do, but I just don't think uh, that we're going to be able to put the burden in large chunks uh, on our taxpayers and expect them to come up to the plate and uh, and pay that because we're going to be in trouble, I think. You know, the, the real middle class now is a lower middle class, you know, and uh, the senior citizens in this town, you know, that number keeps going up, and, they, and, and they're in tough shape. I mean, I've heard from more senior citizens in this budget cycle than I've, than I've heard all the years that I've been on the council, and there, there's some genuine concern there, you know, they, they, things aren't going up for them, you know, they've, whether it's investment, social security or whatever, they're trying to struggle and those are the, those are the people that really support a good strong school system as you know, they have in the past, so, 
I just uh, I don't I don't know what the answer is, but whatever we come up with, uh, certainly it's nothing personal. And uh, when we vote on this, uh, in a uh, uh, second vote, I I hope it's the right thing, and I hope it moves people ahead, it moves us ahead forward, and um, we can work something out that's reasonable for everybody. I, well, I, I appreciate your comment and recognize that, that it may be broken. That helps. Um, I, I think um, all, all that is, is very valid. On our side, we hear the opposite, and, and for obvious reasons. We hear people coming to us who are upset that we're cutting the school budget this much. Um, I, I don't think we're ever going to get, if we, if we could collectively come up with a budget that everybody goes, yeah, that's great, then uh, maybe they don't need us around anymore, I don't know. But, but th I think that's one of the reasons why we put the school board portion of it to a public vote. Because there are uh, a lot of varying opinions in town and they're not always the, the people that are standing at the podium. So I, I think the state has recognized that. I think that's one of the reasons why it's separate from the municipal budget and it is required to have a public vote. And um, you know, I, I can say that uh, you know, we, we're not operating in a vacuum here. We've worked with, with your finance team. We've, we've pressured uh, you know, our school department as much as we can. We're taxpayers too. Nobody likes to write checks if they think they're not being put in the right spot or if they're not being used the best way. So I guess my appeal would be, uh, you know, we, we hear it, we recognize it, we have adapted to it as best as we possibly can. And at this point, I think it, you know, it would make sense to, to see what the town thinks. And I would hope you guys would at least support that offer and, and say, you know, let, let's let the people decide and then we can, you know, we can, we can go from there. I, I just, um, Councilor Roy, yes. uh, uh, for Tom, I just have a, would you just clarify what happens, this goes to the voters in the date, and what happens if it's approved, and what happens if it's rejected, where do we go from there? Could you clarify that sure. for the, the audience? The school validation vote uh, is scheduled for May 14. Um, that will be held in these chambers, so don't come, don't go to the high school, come here to town hall. Uh, it's the school budget that is put out for the validation vote, so-called. Uh, we asked some further questions on this ballot. We asked, uh, is it too high, too low, or just right? Adequate. Kind of the Goldilocks question, right? Um, that sometimes helps, uh, depending on the outcome of the vote. Sometimes it confuses it further. But nonetheless, we asked the question. And then there's a third question on this ballot, which would be, do you wish to continue this practice of validating the school budget? We're able to ask that every three years. Um, so in the event that it fails, then we're back to the drawing board, so to speak, and uh, we're tasked collectively, I think, with coming up with a new proposal. Um, perhaps you'll have some guidance from the voters in terms of how the answer is too high, adequate, too low, um, and you put it back out to the vote. That's certainly one of the reasons we scheduled the school validation vote in mid-May to allow yeah. some time on the back end that in the event we need to rework the budget and go back out, that takes time. Um, so, um, and we keep doing that until the voters approve it, frankly. And the budget that goes out to the voters is the budget that the town council passes? Correct. Not necessarily the budget that the school board brings forward? It's certainly not the right. school board's budget. It's the, it's the budget that the Scarborough Town Council approves and you're scheduled right. to do so next Wednesday evening. Yeah. But the voters are voting on the school portion of right. that budget. Correct. Right. And I think that, that's important. And just to clarify again, there was a question, well, or a comment that, you know, well, then we should be able to vote on the town budget as well. And just remember, for the public benefit, that this is a town council manager form of government, and that process dictates that the town council, who are elected by the people, make that ultimate decision. Right. We'll take any input towards it, but it, it, that's why we're elected. So I should just that. mention in further response to Councilor Alquist's question, in the event that we're unable to have a budget approved by the voters by um, July 1st, mm -hmm. the Charter does provide for how we carry forward. Um, I shouldn't have mentioned it because I don't <laughs> think I can articulate it. I think that's state law. Right? <coughs> it's state law and it's, 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 it's more clearly articulated in our Charter. Yeah. So there are provisions. Uh, and I believe it, if I'm not mistaken, it falls back to my proposed budget. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I, believe I it think does. you're right. Yes. Yeah. If we don't make a decision on that budget or, or by June 30th, which falls to the manager's budget. Which no, I would just okay. note uh, includes the student needs based budget um, as that starting point. So um, that's just something to be mindful of. Um, inaction could produce a, 
further yeah. impact. <laughs> it's um, beneficial to get something <laughs> and, and it's whatever really, that may be. It's real important, and we, and we said it before, too, with the finance committee, it's important that folks get out to vote on this validation right. so that we don't have six, seven hundred, eight hundred of 14, you know, thousand uh, registered voters making a decision for the other uh, 13,000. It's really important that folks get out there and say, do they agree with that budget? And if they agree, is it too low or too high? Or if they disagree, is it too low or too high? Um, that's, you know, that's how they can give us uh, the assistance on that budget. But if they don't get out there and vote, it's going to fall where it falls. If, if I could, I'd just like to not lose um, Ed's point. I think it's an excellent one. Um, you know, potentially we're looking at as much as a 20% increase in tax rate over a four-year period. I think we could all agree that that's not sustainable. I think uh, we'll be tarred and feathered and, and mm -hmm. run out of town. So I think we need to be looking at um, structural change, and that takes time. It deals with contractual obligations. Um, but really my point is, I think during that period, we should appreciate why that tax rate is going up so much. I mean, tax rate is a simple calculation of how much we spend and how much the community is worth, the value. And so during that period, um, I think we've done a, a fairly good job. Others might disagree. Uh, one of the charts shown by the school tonight shows that there were a couple of years where they were flatlined. So I think we've done our part of, of keeping the expense side in check. What's really driving the tax rate increase is the fact that during that period we've lost almost $4 million in non-property tax revenue through the EP, um, GPA model. Mm -hmm. And our value hasn't increased um, the way it had in the last yeah. 15 years or so. Mm -hmm. We were on a, on a pace of seeing value change from year to year of about $60 million. Much of that was commercial industrial. Now we're looking um, at 15. And now we're in the pace of 15. Those two factors together have produced these dramatic clips upward in tax rate. Um, so to Councillor Alquist's point, I think um, trying to increase commercial industrial tax base will help, uh, and, and increasing that, um, our, our total value will help. We are such a small receiver uh, that it almost doesn't matter anymore. I, I hate to be so cynical, uh, but um, you know, I, I did a calculation. Less than 7% of our budget is covered with non-property tax revenues from others. Less than 7%. We're almost a non-receiver, essentially. And so it's born because of the tax structure through local property tax. We need that 1% local tax. And that may come out of this year's budget. We need a casino. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I just had a question. Um, I do see here um, on the sheet that you gave us here about the expenditures change um, that you are showing a 7% increase in salaries and wages. So I was hoping you could maybe speak to that a little bit about what kind of a percentage you're talking about. Um, I'm assuming these are union contract driven. Um, you know, what what is this percentage that we're looking at? Can you direct uh, direct us to which one you're speaking to? Yes. So I just pull out the line and this one. Well, um, the salaries and benefits represent 76% uh, of the overall operating budget, and it also includes the increase um, over half a million dollars that was passed on to us from the state. So the number is inflated by the half million dollar um, um, retirement costs that are being extended. I can assure you that no one is receiving. 7.4% So, um, well, maybe I'll, I'll simplify that question. What were the, um, what is the contract, I guess, for the union side, for the teachers, for the increase? The contract is being negotiated. Okay. So, let me change that. Minus... <laughs> 500,000, it's still 1.5. So we're, we have that on salaries that you're estimating for your request, or? It's not, it's not new. It's, it's, it's you know, the, the, the contracts are structured in step increments, and once the contract is signed, we're obligated to fulfill those. And I, my understanding is that number is what our obligation is to fulfill. 
fulfill the existing contract. The contract I believe is available online. Yeah, the all current the public one. to look at the current contract. So it's on the website if anybody cares to take a look at it. Basic, basically, each year a teacher's incremental step level changes. Mm -hmm. So basically, we took what was this year's contract and bumped each person that we currently have employed. Mm -hmm. you correct me, hit me over the head, Kate, if I'm in front, and bumped them to their next step. So if you were supposed to be a bachelor's with something else then we got moved up to the next level. So that all adds up to all of this. Plus the health so insurance change, <laughs> plus the teacher retirement change. So it wasn't the correct? Like the last teacher contract wasn't necessarily that there was a 3% like salary bump or anything. That's not what's reflected here. It's just okay. what currently exists, what everyone is owed next year, just from the natural progression okay. of the staff. So what is owed then in, in the is it a ballpark of? I'm just trying to wrap my head around what's yeah. the new, you know, minus your 500,000 and minus your increase in, in benefits. What what's new pay scale going? You know, pay money. New salary. New salary. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. A breakout between the benefits and the and the wage increase, and I don't have that with me at the moment. But it's something that we can get for you. Um, okay. We've got like non-bargain groups. We've got bargain groups. We've got some whose uh, contracts are expiring, some whose contracts are existing. So we've got different sort of layers in there that I can break out for you if you'd like. Okay. I just was trying to wrap my rather head around the, the $2 the million. You know, what are the pieces yeah. that drive the $2 million over yeah. last year? Because um, that's, you know, we a big can, number. We can split that out for you a little bit better. So there, yeah. no, there would be no grand departures in terms of wages, and there is the, the uh, uh, compounding factor of the added retirement cost Seventy-five percent or so of our costs are generated by personnel because we're a human-to-human -human business. That's how we do our business. So we've got um, also uh, an increase of eight percent across all of our um, um, uh, health benefits. So there's, there's, there's nothing. There's nothing that would be out of line or unusual in the wage category being more driven by the cost that. Why, why we could give you specifics, and I think that we have as well, on the basis of the um, finance committee's request, agreed that if we call non-union, would be um, would be basically at a parity level of two of a two percent. Okay. So that gives you some sense of the kind of adjustment that's being talked about. Why why would the five hundred and twenty-four thousand dollars for the teacher retirement be in here if it's an in and out? I mean, we keep on talking it's, it's about not, that. It's not a, it, it, it is. It, it's in. Uh, it's just. It's just that it may come out. So we have carried that as an expense, and it is carried in that line. But I thought you said it's added to your right. well, this is what you get from the state. This is just the expenditure side. Of so we have to account for the 500. And we'll get a bill for 524,625. We have to pay that bill. Okay. Now, the, the but in reality. This number is really net of five hundred twenty-four thousand dollars. You could take the five hundred twenty-four thousand dollars right out of here, and then you could really talk about salaries and benefits. Correct. Yeah, it's, it's inflated by the over half a million dollars right. of yeah. additional cost. Okay, that's the danger of comparing one year to the next. If right. you have that kind of anomaly, it, it has dramatic effect. And, and don't and don't be mistaken, that number we are obligated at this point to carry that as an expense. Mm -hmm. And I think what has been explained and what just seems a little strange uh, because um, the school funding is through this very complicated formula that is run by the state, money was taken and they said this will, this will, this is um, half about, about half of what's needed to cover these costs. We're going to run it through the, the EPS formula and you will, you will get your your share. So 
running it through, we still ended up with a subsidy de decrease of over $1.2 million. And on the expense side, we got a $500,000 bill. So if, in fact, the $500,000 bill goes away, that money will all be pulled back out from the EPS formula, and we would likely end up with a subsidy. So it's just, it's, it's, it's either up, it's above the line or below the line here, a subsidy that um, would in, that would decrease by, if we were lucky, both, uh, commence for $531,000. Is, is, is this number truly for the retirement fund for the teachers that you have employed for you? Yes. It is. It's a, it's a, a percentage. Yeah. It's 2.65% of the salaries of every <coughs> teacher and ed tech that belong to that retirement system. Okay. Calculated on the it's actual not, It's not a percentage of the total state mm -hmm. based upon some yeah. formula. No. No, 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 this is not give them any ideas. Well, I mean, it wouldn't surprise me. The state does a lot of crazy things, right? I think it's important just to, to note that it, it has to stay on the expenditure just side trying to because we have to have our appropriations validated. Oh. So when that bill comes, if we don't have the funding on the appropriation side to pay it, then we're stuck. If we don't get that bill, then we won't have to spend the money, but we'll have a reduction in revenue, so we'll need that to offset the loss of revenue. But we've put it on the expenditure side at the direction of the Department of Education because basically they're saying you're going to pay a bill every month. You need your voters to tell you you can pay that bill. So that's why it's on that side. I guess, I was going to say, so when I'm sitting down and, and I'm looking at the budget that I had previously with the line items in it, um, and I pluck out a salary and look at it and say, you know, eight corner ed tech wages and they're up 54%, I mean, this is reflective of the total impact in that line, so of, of the impacts from the revenue sharing, that these aren't... And also, an ed tech could be state mandated because there is a special needs student that needs a one-on-one -on -one ed tech, which we're obligated by law to provide. Okay. So that could be the hiring of two ed techs, and there had only been two previously. Okay. You know, so if I swap over to teacher salaries at Pleasant Hill and it's up ten percent, I guess I mean if I pick a different line to that, look at, that could be a student population shift. I mean, this, that's why one line it's hard to just look at one and think well, we could cut there, it looks really inflated because it's all student driven by numbers of kids in classrooms and what we have, I mean, so, is there so much is obligated by the state that we have to spend. Okay. So it could be special needs students, it could be gifted and talented students, it could be um, adaptive equipment, Title I reading support, I mean, it could be anything. So it's not that we just, felt like we wanted smaller class sizes at Pleasant Hill, if that's what you're looking at. I mean, it's, there's so much that's out of our control for spending that's required by law that it's hard to even look at one line and say, well, we could just cut that because it's too high. I mean, we don't have discretion like that in, I'd say, three quarters of the expenditures, at least. So, well, well there's, okay, so there's some staffing level changes then? Where, or there are constant staffing changes. Okay. So the Switching from one, one, uh, one program to another, from one school to another, um, adjustments in terms of special ed needs for incoming students. Um, yeah, and I don't think you're talking about um, changes in adding FTEs because uh, it was a question that you asked recently and I think George spoke to it a little bit earlier. We've actually added back, since the 2011-2012, the two years when we cut 42 positions, we've added back, I think, 14. Some of the positions were unfilled positions that you didn't fill, and some were by attrition. Right. But we eliminated 42 positions, and we still have 25 down from where we were then. We also so my, my point is that we're not talking about new people, but we, we may be talking about new hires in, an, in a position. 
So if a teacher leaves and a new person comes in to take that person's position, they may be on a different place in the salary table. That's something that occurs to me as you're picking out a line and, and saying, you know, this might be What are these swings? I mean, because it's exactly. a question I'm going to get asked. Well, what do you mean you're giving 10% raises? Right. I and mean, we're not, you know. Not that person necessarily. And you're probably going to see the same swings in another direction in other lines because you're going to have somebody new coming in and somebody retired. So you'll look at another line and maybe that line might show that that uh, set of teachers went down a little bit because now they've got younger, newer teachers and two yeah, people retired. Well, yeah. So the, the picture overall is basically the same staff, but there is a lot of motion. And if you think about the fact that we start to budget these folks, I'm sure the town does the same thing, we start to do our budget calculations in December. By the time we get a budget in June, in September, we have people coming and going, we have new hires, we have resignations. Mm -hmm. We've got a whole different crew out there by the time we actually put that budget into place and we're, we're spending that money. Mm -hmm. So I think we can, we can quantify it in chunks, but I think it is going to be a little deceptive if you're trying to, to match one line and, and make that percent increase. Also, Makes sense. In, also in that EdTech line that you're looking at, Justin, you can correct me if I'm wrong, Julian, um, isn't there state requirements if you, they all go to tech three? Yeah, we have three to work in the classroom, yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you, you've also got level within the techs, those ed technicians, they're assistants, like they're teaching they, assistants they, the they aid with supporting students, and uh, sometimes they're assigned to specific students, but, but my point is there's also levels within which they you know, they're certified by the state, so as they go up a level, then they also get an additional state increase. Could I just ask, it would seem like a, a seem, seemingly very simple question has become quite confusing, <laughs> and, and I appreciate you, it's very difficult to pluck a, a line, there's a, uh, there's a, a story to tell about each one of them to justify, mm -hmm. but when I was asked the question, what are the police getting this year in the contract, they're getting two and a half percent. Look at the, co yeah, look at the contract. <laughs> Are you not able to give us that simple an answer, or negotiate. Negotiate. Yeah, you're they're in negotiations on teachers? Teacher. It's happening right now. The biggest group is the teachers, and they're in negotiations for next year. Okay. So I, could uh, you come in possibly? I heard that first, and then I heard you say so that no this is everything I mean, we're contractually obligated for. So that. So as it is right now, if if, no, if nothing changed, and they just everyone who kept the same contract kept the same contract in the same positions, thank you. Has aged a year. Okay. That's what we're obligated to pay. We're using we're using the same contract, the expiring contract as our contract. So okay, so where is that number at? Is that a flat like you said where union contracts are you know, for police are three? I mean what's teacher? I don't I don't have it before. They're, they're varying scales anyway, right? I mean it's not just like an arbitrary just everybody gets a two percent or two and a half percent. There's different scales depending on how you move through the through the ranks. Well, based on degrees, based on years of experience and so forth. I don't know if I could come up with the COLA off the top of my head because it's a third year of a three year contract. Mm -hmm. I think it's in the 2% range. And it, it certainly is appropriate to be aloof on because you're in, in negotiations. Uh, perhaps we can share offline further information with, with the individual counselors uh, around. But I think there's also some things that we, that we can easily share publicly and just, you know, break it out so that it's a little simpler to understand and that we're, you know, we're not trying to look like there's sort of weird, scary things in there. How long, how long a period of time does a contract normally cover? The last one was three, three years. years. Three years. Three years. Yeah. Typically, yeah. all year. Yeah. Oh, is that what you're negotiating now, a three-year contract? Yeah. That, yeah. We 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 hope, but it's not, I mean, that's a part up for debate, a part of the negotiation, so duration of the contract. So if we're negotiating now, is it possible that they, you know, the union might be willing to talk about maybe less of an increase and that would have they can. an impact? That's all part they of the negotiations. <laughs> we can't really can't comment on those it. kinds of things. You know, they're, you have to come to the bargaining table in good faith. You can't say, I'm only going to... We're only going to act. You have to go with an open mind. You can talk to each other and go back and forth. And it's not its not something that's done in one meeting. We've already had. Let's suffice it to say that when either the municipal or the school department negotiates contracts that we consider 
uh, you know, you know, negotiating certainly in good faith and holding the line as best possible. And I think that's what everybody's got to do. Uh, as a general thing. Because we have to look at down the road, and next year we're going to run into the same problem in the year after that. And uh, I know on a council level, we've, we've uh, we have some negotiations. That's, you know, we can't talk about that. <laughs> hey, Kate, some comments. She's been quiet. I told you not to talk too much. I, 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 no, questions. I'm good. I think I'm. There's a chance I'm going to have a couple. I want to. There's a couple things I want to go through a little bit further. I may have some. Yeah questions before we vote next week on certain things. I do think it's important to say that I don't, I'm, I'm seeing some people looking at this as a, as a black and white thing where, you know, it's, it's not just straight down, the it's not cut and dry, you know, and I don't think when people say or email us saying this is crazy, it doesn't mean that they're not supporting the schools. And so I think that's an important thing to say. I think Scarborough in a whole, at least the last 12 years that I've lived here and had kids in the, in the district, has always been incredibly supportive of the schools. Um, as a parent, you know, you showed a lot of numbers tonight and a lot of graphs, and, and those are helpful. But as a parent looking at it from the other side, I've been thrilled with the education that my kids have gotten. Um, I think they have top-rate teachers. I think they've had um, top-rate services. And so I don't think anybody's saying we don't want to support those things anymore. What they're saying is, I can't afford to live here if this is what's going to happen. And that's, a, that's hard as a counselor to swallow. I'm a, I, I make no bones about it. I'm a, a huge school supporter. Um, but it's very difficult for me when I'm getting emails and phone calls from people that are telling me, I want to be supportive. I, hey, Mike, I've had six kids graduate from Scarborough High School. but I can't afford to live here anymore. So I think um, it's not, it, it was important for me to get across it. It's not, a, I don't want to support the schools. It's not like, I, I don't, I'm not hearing that actually from anyone. It's just frustration over, as Ed pointed out, that's a, <laughs> a very, very large pill to swallow in four years if this is, if this is what goes through. Um, so. But I think, too, at the same time, you have to look at how much you enjoy living in Scarborough. I've lived in Scarborough for 60 years now, and um, maybe more than that. 70. 61 years. Um, and somebody helped put me through school, and I'm retired, and I'm fortunate that I'm still able to work. And 300 and some odd dollars, 384 dollars more on my taxes. Is, is tough, but if I break it out by, by week, and if I um, subtract something else that, you know, that maybe not get the coffee latte or, or every day or, uh, you know, something like that. I mean, we, I think people do find ways in which to afford what, what has to be. And we've done, I think, uh, I think on both the municipal and the school side, have done a, a, an admirable job of trying to bring it down to some, somewhat, and, uh, but there's ways in which people will make a, make do and adjust. I mean, I go to the grocery store and instead of the average $25, I spend 35 just popping into the grocery store. So things have gone up there too. So you adjust your, you know, your, your living. There are those, those people that are on that low end of the middle class that are, you know, one step away from, you know, jump, you know, off the cliff. And then certainly there are a lot of um, pork folks that live in Scarborough. Um, but, you know, I think uh, it, we can't let both the municipal departments and the infrastructure deteriorate and the schools deteriorate and say, wow, what a wonderful town Scarborough is. Um, I think it's important. We need, to, we need to support it. Yeah. So I think it's important to say, too, as a new counselor coming in, uh, th this is an incredible amount of work just seeing it from the town side and, w and watching what the school goes through, I think it's important for the public to know how much work this financial committee on both sides does. This isn't something that they just throw a, a bunch of numbers into a spreadsheet and call it good. I mean, this is, I can't even, I couldn't even begin to count the amount of hours that goes into this. So, kudos. Uh, so, I, I think it's for the public to know. I, it's, 
literally blew me away this year to see the amount of work that both sides have done. So kudos to both to all of you for what, what you've accomplished. And Jim, you have been very quiet over there. Do you have any comments or questions that you would like to ask? We're just going to try to wrap up. Yes, I'm about happy I'm quiet. Okay. But not totally quiet. One thing that, that, that I think has been forgotten a little bit is that the people have given, without much argument, 3%. So it's not like they're not giving anything at all. And I find it difficult riding both sides of the course here. I mean, I know we need a good school system, and we need to have houses full in town. But it's getting pretty scary with the businesses that we think we're going to maybe put on their backside down the road as the businesses are becoming vacant up and down Route 1 and people, as a rule, are not economically satisfied with what's going on in their own personal lives, which equates on to the town side of things. And I don't have an answer to it, if, if that's what you're asking me. You can ask me, but I don't have an answer, but I have an answer that when people have in their mind the 3%, is what they can afford. It's sort of like tithing at the church in a different fashion. But they can't afford it. They can't afford it. So what do you do? And you know, I don't want to. I don't want to have a sit down between us where you say, "Well, we've got to stop here." That is never going to fly with me. Never. By the same token, when the people are coming across totally upset, and I agree with Kate in the amount of calls, I had last year, I didn't get six. This year, between calls and emails, if I haven't had 50, and I got them, half of them sitting right here. People just can't do it. And we as a council don't have the liberty of line items. And quite frankly, I don't want them. But we can only give you a number that we can work with. And it's not up to you to work with that number. Whatever it takes, it's like any other business. It's got to be worked so there's most satisfaction all the way around the table. And, you know, I, I, I spent three hours today going through these line items. They don't mean much to me because I don't think I can read them <laughs> properly. Because what I see in here, sped salaries of $2 million and sped substitute wages of $100,000 to me, that doesn't make any sense, but it doesn't make correct sense either. And it's not up to me to sit down and make individual lines work. Given X number of dollars, we've got to push it back and see where we can fill in the gaps. But that means the teacher's got to work with you also. I mean, it's no different than anywhere else in, in the business world. Obviously, I don't want it to come to a point where the teachers get together like hostess did and said, ah, goodbye. You know, I, I, I don't believe we're nearing that. By the same token, we have to keep it in the back of our mind. And you look at the empty buildings up and down Route 1, and you look at the real estate. People don't have the money, and we've got a community that's got a third of people that are 60 years old or older. They, they, they can't go get a second job or a third job or a fourth job or well, call up and say, I didn't need a few hundred in my Social Security check. You can't spend what you don't have. If you go to the grocery store with a hundred bucks, that's all you can spend. And that, that's, 
really the end of what, I, what I'm going to say. Just uh, there's a, a bit of a housekeeping matter. I I thought the school would have touched on uh, the school capital projects. It's all provided to you. I just wanted to alert you to one uh, that was not contained in the actual finance committee. Uh, <coughs> newcomer to the equation. Um, I don't know if we need to get into it in detail tonight, but um, it's on the first page, I believe, of this sheet, and the so-called, uh, the third one down, laptop purchase, mm -hmm. MLTI. Mm -hmm. uh, and I mention that only because it's, that total is not contained in the total that the Finance Committee has approved. So to keep procedurally on task, I'll prepare a motion that contains the combination of the Finance Committee's work, and I'll prepare a second motion that will include that as a separate standalone item. Mm -hmm. It needs to be added in officially by the so Yeah, and I think with those things, too, we wanted to mention that on the municipal, at least, I don't know, on the school, some, some things are bonded, some things are appropriated, so the appropriated items will be part of the, this year's Budget. Correct. The bonded ones will come years when, the, when their bonds are sold. Just so you know, the MLTI stands for Main Learning Technology Initiative, which is the what? program, the what? laptop <laughs> program that they do. Well, just because a lot of people throw out those acronyms and they're like, what does that stand mm -hmm. for? So that's what that stands for, and that's for the laptops for the seventh and eighth grade students. And the state still has not, um, again, unfortunately for all of us, have not decided <coughs> which device they're planning on using. So they have several devices that they've gotten quotes for, so we had to plug something and in there. these generally would be appropriated amounts, not capital improvements, correct? Smaller amounts would be, the larger yeah. amounts would be. Yeah. Generally, if the life, the life of something is less than Oh, Ten years. I know. think we're able to do short-term bonding for the. Uh, okay. Be very careful as to how long we yeah. bond. Yeah. Yeah. Right. I don't think so. So, um, I could, if I could just point out that there are detailed descriptions attached to that colorful sheet there that describe all the scenarios that we've been working with, trying to figure out what to do with the laptop initiative. And Jen was nice enough to put that all together for us, and she can help us with questions. That, that laptop program. And just from a, a budget point of view, I believe this is the most costly scenario. Uh, a lot depends on the state's direction. So that number may well change in the coming days or, or well, weeks yeah. at the most. We hope any minute that they'll, they'll have a decision and then we can tell you before, hopefully before you even go to vote. But what we've put down is the worst case scenario and we can back away from that. So, uh, the narrative uh, explains all of those scenarios quite quite well, so I encourage you to take a look. I just wanted to alert you to that. That will be the kind of one outlier that will come to you as a separate motion, if you will. Okay. Okay. Any right. other burning issues? It's been a good discussion. I think, again, some more clarity for myself, I know, and I'm sure I have some information out of it, and Kate will get some information to us that answers some of the questions. Okay. I'll try to put something again. We have others. Um, Thank you. We will communicate with you. Thank you. We appreciate it. Thank you. The little numbers running around my head. And For a little while. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Right. So with that, um, meeting adjourned. Adjourned. Thank yeah. you very much.